cat there that's a pet. A study by researchers at the University of Mississippi Medical Center and the University of California, San Francisco, shows that rats given a popularly prescribed antidepressant during development exhibit brain abnormalities and behaviors characteristic of autism spectrum disorders. The findings suggest that taking a certain class of antidepressants known as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, during pregnancy might be one factor contributing to a dramatic rise in these developmental disorders in children. Essentially, what we were asking was, do these drugs which alter serotonin activity affect the brain during development? And the reason that's important is because more and more women are taking antidepressants during pregnancy for the control of major depression, which is a serious, serious problem. Um, but unfortunately, we don't know a lot about what these drugs do uh, to people who aren't adults. The research team treated more than 200 rats with the SSRI citalopram during key stages of brain development and analyzed multiple aspects, behavior, pathology, brain morphology, neurochemistry, and neurophysiology to conduct a broad survey and get a sense of structural and functional abnormalities. I think our study revealed the fact that just like any other drug that you may take while you're pregnant, that you need to be cautious about taking uh, these types of drugs as well. We found that uh, with um, the treatment with citalopram and SSRI, we found that we were able to reset certain uh, chemical um, expression patterns. These uh, chemical markers are part of the synthesis pathway that makes serotonin, and we were able to show that uh, these chemical patterns, uh, these expression patterns were changed. So that would be indicative of the fact that we are resetting uh, the brain's chemistry for serotonin. We found changes in the connectivity of uh, nerve cell to nerve cell uh, in very important regions of the brain that allow for communication across the different sides of the brain. Uh, we found behaviors that were very characteristic of what you would see in autistic spectrum disorder, um, of course in a rodent, um, but very characteristic nonetheless. Uh, and we also saw changes in physiology, the way uh, neurons actually speak, their activity patterns. Um, and so in a combined fashion, this indicated that there was a very strong effect of these uh, SSRIs on um, brain architecture. Children learn a huge amount of how to interact with other people socially by playing during their formative years. Rats do exactly the same thing. There is a, about a two-week window when rats engage in rough-and-tumble play, and if they don't engage in that rough-and-tumble play, they are seriously socially impaired for the rest of their lives. One of the most startling observations from my laboratory was, in fact, that the animals who were exposed as young animals to the SSRI antidepressants didn't engage in any play behavior. Funded by a $1.3 million Eureka grant from the National Institute of Mental Health, the study appears online in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences at pnas.org. Dr. Rick Lynn is the study's principal investigator. When we exposed the red pups, or the, mo the, red, the mothers of the red, and what happened to their brain? The most amazing thing, like, they show many, many abnormalities from our studies, and we really find out something happened to the brain and something happened to those uh, rat behavior. But one thing we, we, we don't know is this is treated, a uh, normal animal treated with a drug. So, and we, we need better understanding in terms of just purely stress or other kind of drugs. 
and how long and what kind of dose and eventually we might be able to come up with some better ideas and might be that time we had better idea too from the carnival side then we might be able to do some kind of correlation and translate from our basic science information into clinical kind of consideration. The most amazing thing what we find out is those treated animals, especially the male pup, exhibit a heck of a lot more uh, often or severe severity in terms of uh, how the brain processing information, the neurochemistry, and their behavior. And they just just have very abnormal behavior. The rat, male pup, especially just sit there, do not do anything. Very much like the autistic kids. If you look at this into a clinical view, you we don't. I don't think I want to say. Okay, now if I had a patient comes in, now I some because of this studies, and then suddenly I'm going to stop prescribing drugs. No, that's definitely it's not the approach. I think we just need to know more about it and more cautious about it and think more about it. Is there any other alternative? If you and your doctor um, decide that you need SSRIs to treat depression, you should take the drugs and um, treat the depression. Because in the first place, the study we're, we've conducted is in rats. In the second place, it's in rats who aren't depressed. So we don't know if the effects we see in our rat model um, would be the same as in a depressed human, or more to the point, um, in uh, a depressed mother. There's no doubt that untreated depression is dangerous for both mom and the baby. Um, so, given our um, early study in non-depressed rats, um, I would argue you treat the depression first um, because you know that that's going to be damaging if you don't treat it. Now, what our study does suggest is that people be cautious. As I said, be certain that your diagnosis warrants um, an antidepressant drug. And obviously, um, use the smallest dose that works. Um, and look into alternative therapies. I think the thing that surprised me the most, actually two things surprised me. Uh, one is just how many different um, markers we were able to find that were affected by uh, this treatment. Um, again, we've seen changes in structure, changes in neurochemistry, changes in behavior, and changes in uh, the physiological responses of neurons. Um, but I think the second thing that is very surprising to us is that we can give these treatments in a very narrow window in time uh, for just two weeks, um, shortly after uh, the subjects are born uh, or in utero um, and see that the effects persist into adulthood um, long after the treatments have been discontinued. Our findings suggest that we are resetting uh, the expression of certain neurochemicals and again pathways um, and with the resetting of the neurochemistry of the brain that would suggest that after um, the subjects are born or later into their life, they may have to be further medicated um, with antidepressants. So um, this is something worth considering. During the period from 1960 to now, the apparent rate of autism has risen from one in 2,000 uh, back in the fifth, early, late 50s and early 60s 
to one in a little under a hundred now. Um, the fact that antidepressant drug use during pregnancy has gone up at the same time that at least some of the rise in autism has gone up is of concern, but don't read too much into it at this point for the very simple reason that the fact that two things occur in parallel doesn't mean one produced the other. Go to umc.edu for more information, including links and a comprehensive news release.